my country is of thee, once land of liberty, of thee I sing, land of the millionaire, farmers with pockets bare, caused by the cursed snare, the money ring. Today, we will look at uh, politics during the, during the Gilded Age, um, in which we will look at boss and machine uh, politics, what is that? And looking at an example with Tammany Hall. Uh, politics during the Gilded Age, uh, you know, uh, at the national level and some of the important issues. And then the rise of third parties uh, during the latter part of the 18, uh, 1800s and 19th century. Um, you know, namely looking at the farmers and the populist party um, that arose from their discontent. Um, so, first of all, you know, during... Uh, during the, uh, the, the 1860s and the 1870s, uh, Congress, they had enacted an ambitious reform program, um, you know, with uh, military reconstruction and the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment and the Freedmen's Bureau, the Civil Rights Act, and so on and so forth. Um, however, after the election of Rutherford B. Hayes and the Compromise of 1877, the national government settled, settled into an stale, uh, era of stalemate and, you know, comparative inactivity. Uh, you know, Americans at this time shifted their attention away from national politics to economic change and the development of the West, industrialization and the labor movement, and the growth of cities. Um, and speaking of the growth of cities, looking at uh, the first uh, part of this, these notes called Boston Machine uh, Politics. Um, so the consolidation of power in business um, had its parallel in, uh, in urban politics. Uh, political parties in major cities uh, came under the control of tightly organized groups of politicians, and these are known as, uh, you know, political machines. Uh, each, ma each machine had its boss. Um, the, the, the machine boss, or the, uh, the political machine boss, uh, was just a top politician, uh, gave orders to the rank and file, and doled out government jobs to loyal supporters. Um, if you ever watched, uh, you know, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, uh, there is a uh, example of a political machine and political boss at work in that movie. Um, the most famous one was uh, Tammany Hall in New York City. Um, Tammany Hall was a was a democratic political machine, um, and they are like a perfect example of what they uh, what political machines did um, and what they stood for. Um, so, what did they do? Where are some examples here? Um, you know, Tammany Hall. They started social clubs, uh, you know, or started as social clubs, and then they later develop, developed in, later, excuse me, uh, developed into these power centers uh, to coordinate the needs of businesses immigrants and the underprivileged. Why do they do this? Why do they care about doing all these things for these, uh, these different groups? Because they wanted votes, uh, you know, on election day. We'll do these functions if we can get the votes on election day and put our people into office. Um, you know, successful party bosses and Tammany Hall's, uh, you know, boss was uh, a man named Boss Tweed. Um, boss Tweed knew how to manage the competing social, eth ethnic, and economic groups in the cities. In fact, uh, in many cases, Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall, they brought modern services to the city, including like almost a crude form of welfare for urban uh, newcomers. I really, uh, I, I think that if you ever watch Gangs in New York, uh, Tammany Hall and Boss Tweed, they're featured in there, and they do a lot of things for, uh, you know, the, uh, the five points or this, this, uh, this, these ethnic ghettos uh, in, in New York. Um, you know, some things that, uh, you know, Tammany Hall and other political machines would do, uh, find jobs and apartments for newly arrived immigrants, show up at a poor family's door with baskets of food during hard times, and that's all well and good, but they also could be greedy. Um, you know, they stole millions from the taxpayers in the form of graft and fraud. And, you know, for example, Tammany Hall in the 1860s, um, an estimated 65% of public building funds ended up in the pockets of Boss Tweed and his cronies. And so, you know, yes, they did some good things, uh, but they really did the good things for to get people's votes. Um, and then at the same time, they were doing, uh, they were full of corruption um, and full of looking at lining their own pockets. Boss Tweed's downfall is actually going to come in the form of political cartoons um, by a man named Thomas Nast. Uh, 
And Thomas Nass is going to draw a series of political cartoons uh, that depict Boss Tweed as a criminal, um, Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall as corrupt. Um, and, you know, Tweed, and I'm paraphrasing here, he's famous for saying, you know, my constituents can't read, but they can sure as heck, you know, you know look at pictures and get the meaning out of pictures. Um, and ultimately, Boss Tweed is going to be thrown in jail a couple times for these, uh, you know, for these uh, cases of fraud and corruption. Um, but you will see machine politics, you know, still, um, even after, you know, things that we'll talk about with the issues of civil service and stuff, uh, machine politics will still be very powerful well into the 20th century. Um, in the next videos, we'll look at politics in the Gilded Age, why is there a stalemate in, uh, at the national level, uh, presidential politics, not much there, um, but then the important issues of the day this, with the civil service, currency, and tariffs.